Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about Phaser Editor. We're talking about it today because it just got a brand new release. This is a product I talked about uh, many years ago, two or three years back at least on the channel, and I've always been a bit of a fan of it. But in order to really understand Phaser Editor, you sort of got to understand what Phaser itself is. Now Phaser is an open source uh, 2D game framework for building games in the browser. It is, I think it's safe to say, this is my favorite project for 2D games in the browser. So if I was going to create an HTML5 game and only an HTML5 game, so not cross-platform, not for iOS, Android, desktop, or whatever, but pure HTML, I would definitely go with the Phaser framework. It allows you to create, and it's got all of the functionality you'd want to create a 2D title, including thousands of examples, and it is updated regularly. It is a great project. And well, Phaser Editor kind of makes up for one of the big holes that you will find in Phaser. So Phaser is a wonderful framework, but it is not actually a game engine. You don't get level editing tools. Um, you have to kind of do all of the coding yourself, or you need to use a tool like Tiled and write an importer for, or not an importer, but a level uh, mapping kind of software to, to make your game objects work from something like Tiled, or you can use something like Phaser Editor. Now, Phaser Editor is available at phasereditor2d.com. It is a friendly IDE for HTML5 game creation. As you can tell by the name, it is obviously built on top of the Phaser game engine. And that is one of the major releases, major features of this new release. So it's actually built on Phaser 2 or 3. Uh, the previous version I covered was back in the two days. And if you're looking for features that we've got available, they are things like asset management. There's a visual level editing tool. There's JavaScript assisting, so you can do your code with full code completion. It's built on top of the Eclipse IDE. Uh, there's a texture packer built directly in, so you can bring all your pack, uh, all your textures into a Atlas generation kind of system for more efficient memory and loading. Uh, we got documentation tools built in, a number of tutorials to get you going, and so on. So yeah, that is basically Phaser in a nutshell. I'll get back to what's new in Phaser itself, but first let's actually show you phaser so you have uh, two demo projects available as well as all of the different phaser projects that you can import into it uh, one of the demos I've loaded up here you can see it's split into scenes the first one is a really simple scene it's for doing like a UI overlay you can see here we got a number of different blocks that go together to create up our game we have uh, outline or display list going on over here of the things in our scene but now let's open up the more complicated scene so this is our level scene right here and you see this is the kind of stuff that you do in phaser editor you can start bringing in the components that make up your level the very various different bits and bobs and pieces and such. They're all selectable down here. You can go ahead and pick anything here, move it around. So if I want my clouds, I have my clouds. If I want to move my clouds, I can move my clouds. If I want to instantiate things into the scene, I can do so. If I want to undo my work, I can also do that as well. So you see, it is the kind of tool you use for placing items in your game world. And right now we've been working with level.scene. Well, as I add new things into it, this is also a code generator. So if I open up level.js, you're going to see we've got the compiled code. So this is the code that Phaser Editor is creating for you. And you see, it's basically just populating straightforward Phaser code. So when we add a sprite into the world, it instantiates it into code. And then you've got your own code dealed with down here. So if you want to extend things or change things, or add your own game logic, you do it inline. So you've got the generated code and then you've got the area for your own code. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there is full code completion for the, what you're working on. Uh, you've also got the ability to directly run your game from within the IDE, like you can see right here. Uh, let's go ahead and exit out of that though. Uh, how? <laughs> I don't know, just a sec. Okay, this is a bit of a catch. It's because I have my browser running in full screen mode, so it automatically opened it up in my active browser, which is available right here. All right, so let's head on back over to where we were. So here you can see, you can also run it directly in here through an experimental version. Uh, there's an embedded version of Chromium available. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the idea behind it. You go through, you've got the items in your scene. When you've got an item selected, such as this dragon over here, you'll notice you can assign a number of different properties to it. Uh, we've got different variables that can be attached. Again, this links into the code. So the variable, we could set the the name of the dragon variable if we wished, so on. Uh, we've got fine tune control over the editor and all the various different properties that you would use from the phaser side of things are exposed over here. On top of that, we've also got things like animation. So we can actually uh, preview the animation that is attached to this guy. And you'll notice down here, we have animation or we have creature objects and so on. So here is our dragon as a block 
over here. Or we come up here and we can look and go to, let's close down our drag from the design section. And I'm looking for, say, the animation. So we've got the animations, Jason. We've got various different animated objects available right now. So here we got one of the, the sprite frames for uh, this guy to do, what's this one? Uh, flaming, all right, flaming idle moving. So here's the forward moving animation here. Here is his attack animation. So you can sort of see all of the stuff is built together. You can have it automatically generate these frames for you. You can set the properties over there. So what this is doing is taking a lot of the complications that we would normally have to deal with when dealing with a phaser type games and handling for you. Well, at the same time, giving you like a full blown level editing environment that is built over top of the whole thing. It's a neat package. It's also kind of scaffolding the game for you. So here is the index file for loading your game. You don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. Here is your game launch code. Code. pretty straightforward you can also have there is a setting here you can configure how um you know the phaser is going to be configured its default uh behaviors and so on um so yeah, it, it's a cool tool for sure. Uh, it, it kind of just takes a layer of the complexity of a phaser game and kind of makes it just more manageable. It gives you a set of WYSIWYG visual tools to work on top of it and some code scaffolding so that you don't have to do all of the grunt work yourself. So it's definitely a neat project and um, you get you got objects up here for adding objects into your scene, instantiating new items. You've got control over physics objects that are attached. You name it, it's probably already in here. Definitely cool to check out, especially if you are already working with the Phaser game engine and you wanted to have more of like a Unity-like experience, so you like the way Phaser works, but you like the tooling or something like you know, Unity or Godot or something, Phaser Editor might just kind of fill that gap for you. All right, so that so far is where we're at. As I mentioned to start this video, there was a new version of Phaser release 2.1.6. Uh, it was released on the 20, 21st, so this was technically yesterday it was released. The big thing here is to bring it up to parity, so the newest version of Phaser is now built in, um, and that will update with all the various associated tools. They also updated to the newest version of the Eclipse IDE, and some, you know, smaller changes in the way that asset packing works, texture packing improvements, uh, and then some talks about Phaser version 3 going forward. And they've been really good about carrying keys forward. I got a key for this a couple years ago, and my license is still completely valid, which is uh, kind of a neat process. So they've also working on a new version of the IDE for the future version. Um, there are some talks about it there, but I'm not actually going to get into those topics for this particular video. So if you're interested in checking out Phaser Editor, uh, it is again available at phasereditor2d.com. Uh, what you saw today was the completely free version. There are some limitations in the completely free version. You see it's available for download for both Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, you get full-blown release version, release notes on uh, what the new release is all about. But the biggest thing is that it's up to the newest versions of both Eclipse and Phaser behind the scenes. Um, um, but you'll notice there are some limitations. So the free edition, uh, this contains all the features but puts some limitations on the number of assets you can use. You're limited to uh, 15 canvases, uh, five texture maps, and three tile maps. And if you want to go beyond that, you need to purchase a license key. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier on, it's $30. Uh, it's also available on the Phaser store to purchase, so if you want to do that. And also the source code is available on GitHub. So you can see under, under Phaser Editor 2D, Phaser Editor repository here, uh, it, it's the full source code here. I don't really know what the, the difference is between the full commercial. You've got to build it yourself at least, and I don't know how much work is involved there. Uh, but again, if you want to support the guy, uh, definitely it's a single developer effort. So if you, if you do find this guy useful, I would recommend uh, trying to support him if you could. Uh, in terms of licensing, uh, this guy is under a license that I don't really actually know that well. It's under the Eclipse public license. So a commercially friendly copyleft license provides the ability to commercially license binaries, a modern royalty-free patent license grant, and the ability for linked works to use other licensing, including commercial ones. It's not one that I run into very often, so I can't tell you straight out what the limitations are. You kind of got a bit of a summary here. It looks like the limitations are very minimal, basically li a liability and warranty, uh, with the conditions that you disclose course, license and copyright notice, and keep the same license with derived works. So it's a very straightforward and you know, reasonable license for sure. So anyways, that there is uh, the phaser editor. It's about a 
500 megabyte download. Basically, just download and extract the zip. Uh, it again is available for pretty much every major platform. And the cool thing is, if you do pick it up, you will find if you come in here and do a new project. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to do a new project. I meant to do a new example project. I mean, you can come in here, do a new phaser example project. And what we are looking at here is the flying dragon example, but they've also got this tile map one. So if you'd rather work with the tile map workflow, they've got a good example of that. And then, as I mentioned, phaser has hundreds of examples built in. Uh, you can also start from any one of those. Uh, but for example, if you want to check out more of a tile map approach, we have that other option available. And this is kind of a good way to get you kind of up and familiarized with what phaser editor is capable of doing. So if you want to go with that more traditional tile map approach, that is what you've got here. So you can see tile map, uh, and how you would generate a tile map editor. Again, what you're seeing in action here is the completely free version. But if this is more of the style of game that you want to work with, again, they have a good example to, to get you started and going. Um, yeah. So e either way, if this is the kind of thing that, that looks of interest to you, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it supports both TypeScript and JavaScript. So whichever way you want to go, you do have those options. And again, you've got some configuration options for the entire project, the top level. But we can switch between JavaScript and TypeScript at any time. And then once again, you get full exposure of all the underlying phaser properties here. And it is basically creating phaser code for you. So at some point in time, you decide, nope, don't want to work with this anymore, or you're working with somebody that doesn't necessarily have the phaser editor tools. It's just a code generator. So ultimately behind the scenes, it is just creating phaser code. So it's very adaptable in that way. All right, so that is it. That is a phaser editor, a free version available with some limitations or about 30 bucks if you want to buy it. Uh, again, I, I highly recommend you check out phaser if you're going to be doing any 2D work in HTML5. And if you find that you kind of really want an editing environment, phaser editor is hard to do better than. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.